How can we talk about black history without mentioning Marcus Garvey? Without the work and influence of Marcus Garvey, we would not have some of the great black icons, leaders and heroes of black history. So, who was Marcus Garvey and what did he do to become so famous? How did Marcus Garvey become influential and how did he make an impact to black history? If you're looking for the answers to these questions, then you are in the right place. Stick to the end of the video to learn important and interesting facts about Marcus Garvey. Hi everyone and welcome back to Black Histories. In today's video, we are going to talk all about the life and impact made to Black History by Marcus Garvey. So, without further delay, let's get into the video. Enjoy! Hi Alyssa, today we are going to talk about Marcus Garvey, a major influencer in black history, a great revolutionist. Yes, I want to know more about Marcus Garvey. I have heard a few things about him. I know he was Jamaica's first national hero, but what else can you tell me about him, Arian? Okay, let's start at the beginning. The full name of Marcus Garvey was Marcus Mosiah Garvey and he was born on the 17th of August, 1887, in St. Anne's Bay, Jamaica. His parents were Sarah Jane Richards and Marcus Garvey Sr. He was the youngest of 11 children, but sadly he and his sister were the only to survive to adulthood. Oh dear, that's shocking. Yes, it is. At age 14, Marcus became a printer's apprentice he travelled to Kingston, Jamaica and became involved in union activities and a printer's strike. This was probably what awakened the passion for his future political activism. Interesting. Even at such a young age. Marcus travelled quite a bit going to Central America and he also visited London. He wrote about the exploitation of migrant workers in Central America. While in London, he attended Birkbeck College, and while still there, he read Booker T. Washington's autobiography, Up From Slavery. I heard that this had a huge impact and influence on him. Is this what led him to set up the Universal Negro Improvement Association? Yes, Marcus Garvey embraced Washington's ideas. He went back to Jamaica to start UNIA in 1914 with the motto, One God, One Aim, One Destiny. <laughs> one love? I thought UNIA started in America. Well, it started in Jamaica and encouraged black people to work hard and self-help. But in 1916, Garvey moved to the USA, settling in New York, where his approach changed. Was it at this time that Africa for Africans became his focus? Yes. Initially, he tried to encourage equality for black people, establishing branches of UNIA and ACL. Africa Communities League. He held speeches across America and encouraged African Americans to be proud of their race and return to Africa, their ancestral homeland. He attracted lots of followers and supporters. The Back to Africa movement or Pan-Africanism movement. In the 1920s, African Americans were affected by Jim Crow laws and were subject to racism, discrimination and segregation. Yes, a tough time. We'll cover this in detail soon as there were a lot of things that happened during this time. I guess people were fed up and were ready for a revolution and a radical black leader. Did you know that amongst Marcus Garvey's followers were the Little Family? Little Family? What do you mean? The Little Family were the parents of Malcolm Little or Malcolm X as we know him today. Oh, that makes sense as it is said that many leaders and black heroes of history were inspired and influenced by Marcus Garvey. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King Jr, Steve Biko, Kwame Nkrumah, Nelson Mandela and the list goes on. He is also mentioned in songs by lots of reggae artists. That's the true definition of a legend and hero to be able to leave a lasting influence and inspire the future generation. But not everyone agreed with Marcus Garvey's philosophy, did they? He had started a newspaper, Negro World amongst other businesses and the Black Star Line, a shipping company to provide transportation to Africa. He was outspoken on building an empire of Africa. Instead of looking for acceptance, instead, creating and building a country of our own. He conversed with European leaders and even members of the KKK, gaining some negative views. 
Marcus Garvey clashed with W.E.B. Du Bois of the National Association for Advancement of Coloured People, NAACP, who did not agree with Garvey's view of black nationalism. What a shame they couldn't find a way to work together, as ultimately they both wanted a better life for black people in America and the rest of the world. This reminds me of Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X, who are fighting for the rights of black people around the same time but in different ways. Yes, if there is anything we can learn from black history is that we need unity. We are stronger when we work together. Is it true that Marcus Garvey also gained attention from the FBI? Yes, a name we'll hear many times on this channel is J. Edgar Hoover. Due to Marcus Garvey's outspoken nature and active work towards black nationalism, Garvey became the most wanted target of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The team was led by J. Edgar Hoover at the time, and he started an investigation on mail fraud charges in relation to the Black Star Line. Oh no! What happened? Hoover hired the first black FBI agent in the year 1919 to keep an eye on Garvey. The Black Star Line was being funded by selling shares in the company. The promotional brochure included an image of a ship the company had not launched yet. After some controversial trials in which Marcus represents himself, Marcus Garvey, was announced guilty in 1923 of mail fraud and was sent to prison for almost five years. Another black leader that went to jail? He was trying to do a good thing for black people. He was released from prison a few years later and in 1927 he was deported to Jamaica. He returned to Jamaica and established the People's Political Party that focused on the welfare and rights of the poor. He moved to London in 1935 and sadly died in 1940. London? But isn't he buried in Jamaica? He was first buried in Kensal Green on the 13th of November 1964. His body was taken and buried at Marcus Garvey Memorial, which is located in National Heroes Park in Jamaica. Yes, in Jamaica there are statues of him, and Liberty Hall former UNIA headquarters is now a dedicated museum to Marcus Garvey and his movement. He went through some ups and downs but made a big impact on society. He organised the United States' first black nationalist movement. He urged black Americans to be proud of their identity. During his active years, Marcus Garvey enjoyed a period of black cultural and economic success. I now understand why Marcus Garvey is Jamaica's national hero and a prominent figure within the Pan-Africanism movement. It is quite sad though to think about all he tried to achieve. This was over 100 years ago and are things any better? Yes, they are so much better but we still have a long way to go. You're right and we have to learn from those before us and take what they did and be inspired and motivated for the future. I dedicate this video to all the beautiful black people and everyone who has taken the time to learn about the Honourable Marcus Mosea Garvey. There was a lot more information out there, so please keep learning. His story is important because he advocated the rights of all and his work related to humanity. His life has a lot to teach us. Well said. I would like to end this video with Marcus Garvey's famous quote. A people without the knowledge of their past history, origin and culture is like a tree without roots. What do you think? Do you agree that Marcus Garvey's movement helped to inspire other popular black heroes and leaders? Do you see any similarities in their work and style? Add a comment below and let us know what videos you want to see next. Remember to like, subscribe and share. See you next time. Thanks for watching and stay safe.